Good morning. <laughs> this is a good time to come out here because the geese are taking their nap. It's time for their morning nap. <laughs> They're so funny. Look at the mud. Look at the rivers of water. Look up on the mountains. There's still a little bit of snow left up there. We woke up to just a skiff of snow on the ground this morning and in the trees it was so pretty. But it's almost 50 down here today, so it has already melted off. But on the top of the mountains, there's still a little bit. The mountains are absolutely breathtaking when it snows. But you said this morning when it came out to let all the critters out of their, their coops, that six ducks came out of the duck house. So I had I didn't close it up last night. There was nothing in it. But uh, at some point last night, they decided that that was a good place to go sleep. So yay. I suspect they will probably start nesting in there again. But Hugh's going to move it down closer to the water. Okay, can't see far enough back in there to see if there's any eggs or not. But, um, anyway, I told y'all I'd give you an update on the pond, what we got finished yesterday, and what's yet to do. Well, there's a lot yet to do, but at this point, we'll have to wait till it dries up just a little bit, because it is a slick, 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 and even a tractor tire can slide in this mess. But, um... You can see this really low spot here in the in the chicken yard. <clears throat> he was going to pull a whole lot of this this really high bank right here up into that low spot. Let me see if I can back up a little bit, give you a better. There you go. It's just it's just a real. I mean, we'll still have. You can see where the water runs down. That's that's just a natural little canal that it follows so we'll have to have to leave a little creek I guess you'll call it a little dry creek when it's dry weather and and a creek that will run into the pond but uh, he said he thought he would he would uh, deepen it just a little bit because these guys someone had asked in an earlier video how we were going to be able to make this pond more clear. Well, I don't think that can happen. Right now, of course, it's really muddy because of all the the dirt that we've stirred up, but even when Hugh hasn't been digging in the pond, <laughs> the ducks and the geese just, just flailing around in here and swimming and, and diving and all the things they do. They keep all the silt on the bottom because it's not deep. They keep it all stirred up. So I don't think that this little pond will ever be clear this summer I will be putting the green lime in it occasionally to keep the, um, the algae from becoming an issue like it did last year. But Hugh said he doesn't think the algae will be a problem as much water if, if the water continues running in it like we have it right now. Um, you can see we trenched out to catch the bulk of the water from the overflow. <clears throat> Look at this. I am slip sliding. But we're going to put a we're going to put a hose on the end of that that spillway right there and bury it right down into there, right down into the pond. And over there, you can see that white that white pipe. Let me go a little closer. Um, it's just just barely down into the water. Uh oh, they woke up. No, that's because he he came over. He woke the geese up. Oh no. But uh, anyway, he's got it angled in such a way that it is empty in the water and keeping it con a consistent depth. I don't know if I can get over there close enough for you to see. Well, yeah. Let me increase. I'm going to increase the size and it muffles my voice. So I'm, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to increase it. There we go. 
So you can see it's coming out of there real nicely. It will keep it uh, just a, a nice even le uh, level. And then down there is the creek that runs on down into the bigger creek. But anyway, there's the girls. The mama there with the, the red tag in her ear, that's Ruby Lee. That was Jared's cow. But the the eventual the eventual fence for the, the ducks and the geese and the chickens for the bird lot will follow this fence right here up to the edge, close to the edge of the water pond, and then it will shoot this direction and over to the upper, well, where, where the geese are pretty much, leaving a nice area for Hugh to be able to maneuver the, um, whatever that thing is called, the holly thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, girls. Oh, brother. Um, the trailer. It'll give him a nice area. We'll leave him plenty of room to swing around the goose and bird lot without having to make too big of a sweep. And it'll go just to the uh, to the left of the, the white van right there and up to the corner of the dog lot. And of course the chicken house, the coop, will also be over in here. So let me step back and see if I can give you a better idea of how big the area will be all together. If I can walk in this mud, I'm telling you, I'm sliding, sliding, sliding. It was scary watching Hugh yesterday create that land bridge down there. It's about six feet wide. He did that with a tractor. We filled it up with, with rock and busted concrete block so that the tractor wouldn't sink up as he slowly filled it going over all the way over to the other edge. But uh, it's pretty firm. It's not, not super duper firm, but it will firm up over time. Um, we'll smooth it all out, plant grass. He'll pull all these banks back and um, make a gentle slope, hopefully. Um, and we'll plant grass. Hopefully the, we'll put something, some kind of matting down over top of it so it'll have a chance to grow before the, the birds start eating it all. But uh, you can see how deep that dip is. I mean, it's, it's pretty significant. But the bird lot will be from where I'm standing over to the corner of the dog lot. This whole area down to the edge of the, the water tank and all the way over to the fence. And then the back of the, the, the dog fence will be the back. So it's going to be a nice size area and they'll have plenty in there to keep them busy and entertained. Uh, yes, you think you're coming. <laughs> I think they truly do that just, just to show off for each other. Watch this guys. <laughs> Cause the minute I turn and I look at them, they pull their head back and walk away like I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> These geese are, they're just boogers. They really, truly are boogers. What? But I love them anyway. And there's the hubby. Get ready to make noise. We still have a goose to sleep. That one just didn't get its nap out last night. You see it? <laughs> oh, nope. She just got woke up. Just get out of the way. <laughs> but anyway. I wanted to just give you the update on the on the pond. It's far, far, far from over. But he got all of this up here where the old chicken house was at, scraped down and cleaned up. And there's just that little pile right there, the rubber mats he saves. He uses those things to cover up uh, motors and such. A couple pieces of wood that needs to go to the wood pile. And then there's just this, that, and the other. I'm seeing some black pipe that might be usable over there to catch that water. Huh. I wonder if you knew it was there. I don't know. But anyway, not too much left to clean up from the old bird or the old chicken coop. Just a little bit of stuff that was in it that got tossed out and 
not put away. But I think we're we're going to have a, an opportunity to get this all cleaned up and ready to sew down before spring. And then I'll start, as soon as I finish up the back of the, the dog lot, I will start with my, my bird my bird yard fence. And that I look forward to. I look forward to keep them contained so they can't get in my garden and to keep predators out. We've lost too many too many birds this year, even with all the chicken wire up, because the predators, they just snap through that chicken wire and come on through. So it's going to take a, a good fence to keep them out. And a good fence will keep everything in except for the ducks. They can come and go as they please because they fly and they do fly and, and uh, visit other areas on the farm. And of course, Ferdinand. He goes wherever he wants to. Okay, I'm gonna go over here and man the fence, keep the cattle from coming in. Because they love to come in here and find the ferment that he has to open this gate. Moving slow. This is slick, slick, slick. you such a good girl such a good girl yes you are yes you are a good girl hmm what you think baby what you think are you a sweet mama sometimes she'll let me walk over and pet her and sometimes she won't I don't think she's gonna want me to pet her today you see I've got stuff in my hand. Let me see if I can put it down. You want to let me pet you today, baby? <laughs> she says, no, your hand smells funny. Ooh, you got slobber slinging everywhere. That's gross. That's gross. You're a good girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I think your hay ring needs moved to higher ground. <laughs> You girls, yuck. Yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck. Nope. She says, no, I don't want my nose scratched today. Thank you very much. That's all right, darling. That's all right. You're such a good girl. But you can see how beautiful and clear that water is. That's, that's a wet weather spring. And they have been over here just lapping it up for probably an hour this morning. I watched them for a long time out the kitchen window. And my kitchen window is up there directly above where I have that saw set up. And you can see the last little bit of fence. Well, while I was <laughs> standing there this morning, I thought, you know what? I would love to be able to see the pond from the kitchen window. And you can't tell from this angle. But when I'm standing at the sink, looking out the window... If the fence is as high as the rest of it, then it blocks the whole pond. So I figured what I'm going to do right there is a sweep. I'm going to do just a, an area probably about eight feet wide that's going to be just four feet instead of the five feet. And across that, because part of, the, part of the purpose is to keep the birds from flying in there, or the, the chickens. Um, the other part is to keep the dogs from pulling a bird through the bottom of the, of the fence. So, obviously, any height of um, wooden fence right there will take care of that. But I'm going to just make, like, a big, it'd be like a big smiley face on top, much lower in the middle. 
with chicken wire across the top to keep the birds from flying in. And then wood at the bottom will keep the, the dogs from pulling a bird in. And then I'll be able to see the pond. <laughs> problem solved. I didn't know there was a problem until this morning, but I decided there was a problem. So it's solved now. Hi, darling. I don't like that sticking over in there. That's just something that you can catch your little, your little head on, isn't it? Watch your nose. Watch your nose. Barbed wire is not my friend. It hurts every which way from Sunday when you stick yourself with it. Alright, there. Now it won't poke you. And that's the better thing. You are a muddy mess. Hugh and I were passing neighbor's farm the other day and one of their black cows, its head was completely orange with red clay mud. I mean thick. It must have been a half an inch thick on, that, <laughs> on her head or more. And I said, what's wrong with her? And he said, oh, they do that. They go over and scratch in the mud when, <laughs> on the bank and it just gets mud all over their face. I don't know why they do it, but they do. So anyway, I haven't seen any of ours looking like that yet. So I don't know if it hasn't occurred to them or if they just have better sense. I'd like to think that. They're just smart cows. Yes, you're a smart cow. You are, you're a smart cow. <laughs> we don't tag our cows. This one, this 504C has been in her ear since after, after Jared passed, our neighbor had bought her um, and then we ended up getting her back. So the, the tag, 504C, that's been in her ear for years now. And I just keep thinking that at some point it's going to fall out. It would hurt her more for us to try to remove it than to just leave it. But uh, we don't tag our cattle. There comes Pops with the hay bale. go over and investigate, make sure that this is what I ordered. Look what a mess, oh my goodness. That's just soup. I guess he's going to put two bales out. It's going to be hard getting that, that gate open back up. Who's anxious to take all of this chicken wire down anyway because the weeds grow up in it and he will he will go around a fence with a weed eater and just knock the weeds down a couple of times a year just because he doesn't like the way it looks I don't either but anyway you can't do that once there's chicken wire in the way so he's looking forward to having the chicken wire completely gone it served its purpose it did but oh well that's one of those live and learn moments. It helped to keep the chickens contained, but didn't really keep the predators out. Well, the other girls are standing down there looking goofy. I don't know what they're waiting on. <laughs> they're just staying out of the way of the tractor, I guess. They said, we'll just stay back here until Pops is finished. He can get wild on that beast sometimes. I think that our water table should be picked up quite a bit by now. If it isn't, there's something wrong. But, uh, I mean, we're still not up to optimal. So, 
hopefully we'll still get some rain this winter. I just hope it doesn't come all at once. We need it just in little spurts. Actually what we need is a couple of really, really nice snows. Because snow, it, when it melts slowly, it just, it goes right into the ground. It doesn't, there's not a whole lot of runoff. But uh, the snow is the, west, the best way to build your water table back up. So if we could get maybe three days of um, 12, 14 inches of snow or so, that would go really, really nicely toward um, giving us our water table back. Willow, that was rude. The, the black cow with the half white face, her name is Willow. I've introduced you to her before. There comes Pop with the other bale of hay. at the barn or they would be in there helping themselves. <laughs> said, Why don't we just uh, take care of this? We don't even have to bring it out to the ring. He does leave the other side open for them so they have a place they can get in out of the weather when they want to and occasionally they do. Most of the time they just like to hang out outside. when he's routed it out <laughs> with the tractor wheels and then pulling it back through that sludge. Ugh. All right, there we go. Say hi, Pops. I was telling them about the pond. Tell them what your plan is. I want to get a little deeper. I try to get it stabilized right here where we can pull it. I maybe get some rock around the edges because again, so when they climb out, they keep caving it off. Eventually, we'll get it. Yeah. Yep, yep. I'd like to even have a little area down here where I can carry a lawn chair and just come sit down and sit and watch them every now and then. But my geese. I just don't understand why anybody would want geese. But I'm one of those strange people that do. <laughs> talked your ear off this morning. I hope that your day is absolutely wonderful and that you enjoy doing everything that you love. I think I'm going to go over and work on cleaning up my front porch. He said if we get the front porch cleaned up that maybe we can start putting that plant wall up pretty soon. We have so many, so many things that need to be done. Actually, what I need to do is go finish cleaning out the area where my grow room's going to be. 
that one's probably the, the most essential because we are within a month of starting plants. Good gravy. There's just not enough hours in the day. Either that or <laughs> Hugh told me one time, he says, I'm not sure whether I've slowed down or time has speed, sped up. But either way, there's, there's just fewer hours in the day. Okay. Love y'all. Bye-bye.